Hello world, it's your girl Becca Rose and I'm here today with a very exciting interview. As you all know, I recently interviewed Blanche J and she was on the song called Black Girl by the person I'm interviewing today, Honest Ave. Honest Ave is a music producer, hails from the South. And yeah, we're just gonna get into a com conversation and get into it. So hi, Honest Ave, how you doing today? I'm great, great, how are you? I'm doing good. I'm excited to talk to you because I'm talking to a producer. So like, I believe you're the first producer I've interviewed. And oh. yeah, so like thinking of like production, you know, how involved are you with lyrics? Because, you know, you're more on the technical side and all of that, but like, are you ever involved with the lyrics like that when you work with artists? I have not been involved with lyrics ever. Um, sometimes I'll dabble just on my own when I'm making the music, just to know how it's gonna flow. But as far as actually uh, giving any lyrics to artists or anything, no, nah, I haven't been involved on that part. <laughs> okay, that's what's up. And how long you been in the game, in the music game? Actually, I've been producing for 20 years, um, but this is the first project that I'm putting out this year. Um, and I actually just started putting on streaming platforms as of last year. So it's kind of been like a private baby, but now I'm, you know, putting it out there to the world. Well, can you clarify why it's been so private and baby? <laughs> I, I noticed that I'm like, yo, her dope, her sound is so dope. And I was like, you know, I see the three uh, songs. You got one with Jay Nana, one with Mishik. Mich yes. And and one with Blanche J, of course, shout out to Blanche J. Like, yeah. um, so why, why was, you know, what's the backstory behind it being like hidden all this time? Um, I don't know. It's just kind of like, you know, Erica said, I'm an artist and I'm sensitive about it. So, you know, I just kind of always, it's something that I enjoy doing, but it was kind of nervous about, you know, putting it out there and getting the criticisms or not criticism of other people. Um, but, you know, with it being my 20th year, I felt like, yo, this is the time. Um, I can't worry about other people sleeping on me when I'm sleeping on myself. So uh, just decided, let's, let's do it. Let's put it out there. And I've gotten great reception. So I'm very happy that I did. That's what's up. That's already a word about the gem of like, you know, don't worry about people sleeping on you. Just don't sleep on yourself. You know what I mean? I but we're, we'll, we'll keep getting into it. So, you know, I'm just wondering, like, um, what is like, do you have, if you do, a Mount Rushmore of producers? Like, are there any producers that you kind of look up to and would be like, yeah, they're the dopest? Um, Definitely like Quincy Jones. Um, anyone who's worked with like the Motown sound back in the day. Um, a more recent time is definitely like Timbaland, uh, Kanye, uh, Pharrell, you know, just those guys. Uh, I'm sure there's more um, OVO, the OVO sound is crazy right now. Um, so yeah, um, I would say those people. Okay, that's what's up, solid list, shoot, so solid list. So I, I, I'm, I'm with you there. So like thinking of like, you know, producers and being a producer, like, um, do you do like what what is your what's the extent of your production do you you know uh, ever go to shows and like DJ or anything like that or do you like you know kind of stick to just like creating the beats like what's like you know what all do you do as a producer? Um, so I have not DJ. It's actually funny that you say that because that's actually one of my goals before the end of the year to kind of teach myself how to DJ. Hey. Um, yeah. <laughs> so it's really weird that you would say that. I'm gonna take that as confirmation. Um, but yeah, like I haven't DJed anything. Um, it's just all about the melodics, the harmonies and the beats. Um, that's, that's my extent of it. Yeah. Okay. That's what's up. Well, in your time as a producer, is there, do you have like a, like a horror story? Like what's a producer's nightmare when it comes to the production process? And on the other side of that, what's like a, like best case scenario? Um, horror story. I don't have any personal horror stories. I don't think, um, I think that, I guess I would say like horror story would be like, if I'm just in a random moment somewhere out and I get these ideas in my head and I can't just jump into it and hone in on it in that moment. So it's kind of trying to keep that energy. But when I do have the opportunity, I might just like hum like the melody or something into my phone just so I can remember. Um, so I would say that would be worst case scenario. Um, or like not hearing back from an artist like in that moment because it's kind of like, I'm in this energy, I'm in this moment. And then they respond a week later and it's like, okay, I'm not really there anymore. But um, yeah, um, worst, I mean, best scenarios is just being on that same wavelength with the artist. You know what I mean? They hear the sound and, you know, they already feel where you're with it before you even say anything. Like it just gives you guys that same energy. So that's like the best moments, like that creative connection right there. Okay, yeah, and I definitely, definitely felt the energy on all three tracks that you have out. Like, I definitely felt the energy, but for sure, like, I cannot stop ranting and raving about Black Girl. Like, 
the collaborative energy was there. Like the beat went so great with like Blanche J's voice. And I'm always like bigging up her voice. And like, she's yeah. just an artist. Like how, can you tell me the story of like how you guys came together and like what that process was like in creating Black Girl? Yeah, so Blanche, I actually started following her. I want to say like 09, 2010. Um, I just found her on YouTube. And then when I was sharing the YouTube video with a friend, he's like, I know her, like we sing together. And so we actually were kind of running in the same circles and I just kind of followed her career from there. Um, anytime she was close by for me to, you know, watch a performance, I tried to be there. Um, and, you know, we kind of formed like a friendship or, you know I'm saying, an acquaintanceship at most. Um, and I knew that when I did put out a project, I wanted to work with people that I looked up to. Um, and I wanted to work with people that share that same love for the music. And I love Blanche. I love her sound. I love her technicalities. I love the people that she even studies. Um, and so when I did have the opportunity to work with her, I was like, I got to come correct. You know what I mean? She already has a fan base and I want to do something that her fans can resonate, you know, with, and, but at the same time, do something different. And I never heard Blanche on, um, like a bounce beat before. Um, and so when I did put it together, I was like, yeah, this is the one. And I wanted it to be like timeless because I don't know if I'll get another chance to work with Blanche. So <laughs> I'm hoping so. We, we're trying to get something working, but uh, yeah, I wanted something timeless and um, it, it's very timely as well. So um, I'm glad that we had the opportunity to work together. I love that you said that because I wrote in my write up that the song is, I deem it timeless. So I'm glad you feel the same way because it is like you like an anthem's always like a good thing right and like yeah. Blanche is the perfect artist to sing such a song because you like you know she is about like positivity and like you know high vibrational music and is also like an artist of faith and would you also consider yourself an artist of faith um yes so if you mean in the terms of like um genre not so much um but I'm a person of faith so everything I do you know what I mean I walk in my faith um, and so for me, you know, it's no different than living at, in a faithful world or living in a secular world and being faithful. You know what I mean? It's like nothing can separate me from the love of God and nothing can separate his love from me. So beyond that, it's, you know, whatever is whatever. But, um, yeah, Blanche definitely has, you know, a relationship with God. When I actually started listening to Blanche, she was doing gospel. So, um, oh, with me growing up in the Bible Belt South, you know, it's, it's intertwined in us. You know what I mean? I grew up in a church where... We didn't have drums or anything. We had a piano player and foot stomping. So, you mm. know what I mean? <laughs> Baptist. <laughs> so. Was it Baptist? Was that right? It is Baptist. Oh, see, it is I, Baptist. I, know, I know Southern Baptist. Yep. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's what's up. So, I mean, you, I feel like you basically answered that um, my next uh, question, but like, how do you navigate being a person of faith or an artist of faith in the secular realm of music? You've got like, you know, I always think about like the very like pious people in mainstream religion who you know judge if you you know they kind of just judge what you do as an artist what do you what do you say to that do you experience that like how do you navigate like being able to have creative freedom but keeping in mind you are a person of faith yeah um I I, I mean I don't have a direct answer I guess I would just say to me music doesn't have like genres and things like that like music is what it is within itself you know what I mean what another artist in the form of a rapper or singer chooses to put on that, that's their way of expressing themselves. You know what I mean? But I would never shy away from doing any type of music because I like all kinds of music. Um, and I think even the most religious person or faithful person, you have different parts of life that you walk through and you can relate to different things. You know what I mean? So um, yeah, I don't, I don't think too deeply into it. I just stay true to myself. That's true. Don't give it energy kind of thing. Yeah. But, but but just say, like, I'll throw a scenario. If you had like the like the meanest, most pious person come up to you and say, you're living wrong and you need to turn. <laughs> like, and they start doing all of that. You know, what would you say? Like, what, what, you know, what, you know, what do you do in that situation? I don't know, man. You got to listen to the instrumental, I guess. Take the words <laughs> out. <for self -answer. laughs> I like that. If you don't like it, listen to the instrumental. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I feel that. So that's what's up. And so like, you know, we talked about your collaboration with uh, Blanche J. And also, um, you know, you, we, I'm thinking about your name, Honest Abe. I had a guess that it might be connected to Honest Abe. Was I right? Or like, yeah, what's, yeah. What's, name, what's behind your name? Yeah, you're right. So my, my given name is Avril. 
Um, so with Honest Abe, it just, it actually came before the music stuff. Um, kind of around the social media time, I just kind of got a reputation for being very honest and saying things that other people wanted to say but didn't say on social media. Um, and so I was just known for being extremely honest. And so I thought about, okay, cool, Honest Abe. And it became like, just kind of my tag on social media. Um, so when it came to music and artistry, I just kind of thought it was a smooth transition. Oh, that's what's up. I like when you have like, I like when artists have like a alias nickname that like extends beyond the music, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, <laughs> true to your character. So like, are, was it like the hard truth? Like, is it kind of like people are like, ooh, like. <laughs> <laughs> I have those moments, but I try not to be so blunt now. You know what I mean? Even with my honesty, you know, keep some sensitivity there because you never know. So. Um, but you know, early Facebook days when it was all about a status, I was in there. <laughs> my my Facebook uh, posts are still a little, you know. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so I feel you. So that's what's up. So so you got that off of Honest Abe, Honest Abe. But like, do you have any uh, like specific draw to uh, Abraham Lincoln, or is it just kind of like the the play on the the nickname? Yeah, I think it's just the name. Honestly, um, nothing nothing too deep about it. Okay, that's what's up. But no, I like that. That's what's up. And like, um, you know, I know that you've got some projects coming up. Um, yeah. Can you tell? Can you tell me about the project that's already been promoted? Like, what's the name? When's it coming now? And what what's unique about it? Yeah. So, um, name I, I will say is not solidified, so I don't have anything to release there. Um, I do have. I'm looking forward to an August twelfth release. Um, and so I'll have an actual release party here in Charlotte, uh, August 13th. Um, I'm excited about, like I said, it's the first project I've ever done. I don't know if I'll no ever do another personal project. Of course, I'll continue to work with other artists. Um, but with it being my 20th year, it was really important to me. When I started in music, like I said, there was very few people that knew about it. Um, and I had a really good friend that I grew up with since fifth grade. And uh, he was an MC. His name is Breeze. And we always said we worked together. Um, and unfortunately, a few years ago, Breeze lost his life. Um, and I was just reading through some like old yearbooks and uh, came across a post that he, or excuse me, um, something that he wrote. It was like, I didn't forget. And so I thought it was important to me to not forget like what my dreams were. Um, you know, we get caught up in the monotony, the monotony of life and we forget about what our dreams are and our aspirations. And so I felt like I owed it to myself. I owed it to him. Um, to do the project. And so, you know, that's where it started. And there are a few like um, artists that are on the rise that I really looked up to as well, musically. And so I've been able to be blessed to reach out to them and be welcome with open arms to work with them. And then there are people that I look up to like uh, the Blanche Jays that are on there. Um, I also have a track with Alec Walls from the Walls Group that's uh, gonna be coming out. So um, yeah, I'm excited about it. I'm excited for people to hear what I've been, you know, brewing for the past 20 years, you know, it won't show all of me, but I think it'll be, it's a good range of who I am and where I am with it. Okay. No, that's what's up. So, and I, you know, condolences to your friend, of course. So like, how are you going to incorporate his work into your music? Yeah. So I actually, he's going to be on the opening track for sure. Um, I have some uh, vocals of his that I'm having put on a track. And then also I'm hoping to have him on another track. Um, so at least two, but, uh, yeah, he's definitely going to be a part of it. And then, like I said, it's not about the money for me, but the money that is generated from it, I would definitely like to, you know, have put towards his, his children. He did leave behind, um, two children. So I would like for that to take place. No, that's what's up. And like, you know, it's always interesting thinking about like post-humanist music, because a lot of times it's like this, uh, there's a great area of like the, the the consent of it and what the family wants and things like that. But, you know, your friend wanted to keep the music alive and wanted to work with you. So it's like, right. you have more of that, like, uh, understanding that like, this is what he would have wanted. But like, um, how do you feel about like certain post-humanist projects that have come out? Like, you know, Mac Miller's, Aaliyah's music coming onto the platforms, although her family wished against it. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, um, typically, how do you feel about like post-humanist music? Um, because I'd be conflicted because I'd be happy to hear it, but I'm like, damn. Yeah, I was gonna say sometimes I'm happy about it. Um, I'm a huge Aaliyah fan. Um, so I was very happy that that came out, you know, just for selfish reasons. Um, I can understand not wanting to maybe hear your family members' voice all the time, how that can be impactful to you. So I understand the sensitivity of it. Um, but you know, they, they were who they were as artists and they have fans um, who become like a second family and things and we do want the music. Um, and I think that if it's 
respectful. And I think that if it's done right, you know, and get the permission of the family, that is, is completely cool. Um, especially if it's music we haven't heard, you know what I mean? Just to see where they were going with it and, you know, where their thoughts were. Um, when it's incomplete music, sometimes I'm conflicted, like, you know, they left that there in a place for a reason, you know, maybe they weren't ready to put that out. Um, so like you said, I'm split. <laughs> I feel you. And like, um, Anderson Pac has a tattoo where he's like made it very clear. He doesn't want any of his, like, he doesn't want any posthumous work coming out and things like that. So it's like, you have the artists who are like, no, I don't want that. And then like some who like probably don't care, but like maybe their family does. So yeah, it's, it's always just interesting, but like, I'm excited for that project coming up and this is going to be like your first complete project. It is I'm like excited. an EP or album. It's going to be an actual album. Yeah. Okay. Like we got away from that. You know what I mean? We're, we're kind of like a singles world right now. Um, but I mean, I don't know how you are, where you grew up, but um, I grew up in an era where it was all about a full album, a full project where you could kind of rock it from top to bottom and, you know, you honed in and, and, and I'm looking forward to, you know, being a part of that, that generation of, and doing that. Yeah, for sure. Well, I appreciate that because, yeah, um, I'm very much into like complete projects and I like like playback, you know, like yeah. play it over and over again and things like that. So like, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to hear that. What's the genre? What's the sound? Because you've given us three very different sounds so far. Okay. So, like, what like what direction are we going with this um, upcoming project? Um, Definitely like hip hop, R&B. Um like the combination thereof, kind of like, you know, early 90s where they started to blend hip hop and R&B. Um, but because of how I grew up, you will hear soul, you will hear gospel, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, so uh, a wide arrangement. Um, and then, like you said, the J99 track will be on there and that's um, like an African flow. That was new for me. Um, it was a challenge, but I took that on and I'm happy with the uh, um, you know outcome of that. Um, so, yeah, like I think you'll hear a little bit of everything. Okay. Yeah, and then I was I was uh shocked by the Jay Nana track after hearing Black Girl. I was like, oh, like we've got like an Afro beat kind of vibe going on. Mm -hmm. Like I really liked it. Like, but what was the difference in working with like an R and B track to like a you know bounce track to a Afro beast track? Like, was there any stark difference? Yeah, you kind of have to so with the Afro beat track, I kind of had, I really like to learn the music, you know what I mean? Learn the history of, you know, where they started as far as using instrumentation for certain types of music and things like that. So I had to really like for a few months, listen to Afro music so that I could understand like, okay, they use these type drums and this is why, or, you know what I mean? Where do you fit melodies in here? And just be respectful of the genre. Um, and I grew up listening to, you know, my mom is like a huge Luther Vandross um, and Teddy Pendergrass uh, fan, but she also oh, yeah. listens to, and, you know, Michael Jackson, Prince, you know, Rick James, and then my dad, he's more of a George Clinton, Sly Stone, Jimi Hendrix, bluegrass type guy, you know what I mean? So, you know, just growing up with that wide arrangement of music, um, and then myself being in band, so I love big band music, classical music. Um, I even listen to, like, doo-wop, you know what I mean? I like that music. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. I just, I'm, I'm in, integrated with so much. Um, and so when it comes to the music, I like to really learn where that style of music came from, become a student of it, and then, you know, go forward from there. And I hope, I hope it shows in the music. I hope I do it justice. <laughs> right, you, because you did them all well. I'm like, okay, like, you got range, basically. And, like, let's talk more about band. Um, I wasn't in band, but I've, I, uh, like, you know, did, I did it for one semester, and I was supposed to get on the flute, but then I was like, I want to be in phys ed, and I didn't. <laughs> but, um, like, what instrument did you play? How long were you in band? Give me all the tea on, like, band, honest age. Yeah. <laughs> so, I got in band in seventh grade, and I did it through the entire high school process. Um, I played clarinet, and then when I got in marching band, I switched over to mellophone, which is like a marching version, you know, of the French horn. Um, I've been in- Ain't that the really heavy one that you put around your body? No, it's, it looks like a big trumpet. Oh, okay, okay. But the, the, the French horn, the one you see- Oh, you're free down with is the one you rap, but- um, <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry, you got me? All right, okay. Oh, yeah, so yeah, it's like- Okay, okay, it's like a big mar marching uh, trumpet type instrument, uh, which is totally different than the clarinet, which is a woodwind instrument. So 
Um, but I love the sound of brass instruments. Um, I think that any music I do, you'll always hear horns. Like, I love horns. Um, I also was in concert choir. I was in the gospel choir. Um, anything to do with music, I'm, I'm involved. Man. Did it? Oh, so you got pipes on you too. Oh, I wouldn't say pipes. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I can blend in. But, but you you would get on the mic. Would you ever Would you ever give us a tune where it's featuring yourself? Like, I don't know, man. I ain't gonna commit to that for you. I ain't gonna commit to that one. <laughs> okay, but okay, so like, but that's what's up. So you did like the wood and the brass and band, and you did it like all throughout um, high school. What stopped you from doing it in college? Um, so the school I went to didn't have like a football team or anything like that. So yeah, it just the lack of interest without the marching and all that. <laughs> ah, I feel you. Okay. <laughs> well, so the, you so you do play instruments because I have a hot take on like producers who don't play instruments. I just feel like they're not legit producers in my opinion. It's I I know like it's a it's a kind of messed up bias, but I just really appreciate somebody who like can read music, play an instrument and like there's just something like that really resonates with you watch it because like like you said you listen you like classical music like yeah I love like watching like an orchestra and like like, see people, like passionately play that, yeah. that means something versus like hitting the pad so what's your take on that um so I mean so when it comes to me producing it's not like I'm in here you know with a horn playing and things so <laughs> um I, I am one of those people with the pad and things um <laughs> But I do think that it's important to have both sets of knowledge. You know what I mean? I think that, like you said, being able to read music and things like that, um, if you can, you know, to try to learn both sides. But I don't. I wouldn't take anything from either side because neither one is easy. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, I wouldn't take anything from either side. But I definitely have a lot of respect for, like you know, like I said, back in the Motown days where you got every instrument sitting in there in the studio um that's that's big ups to them respect right okay I like that that's what's up and like so you were, we talked about your project coming out August 12th it's gonna be more of the like you know 90s R&B vibe and I that's that's my sweet spot so I'm I'm ready I'm ready and what what's going on with like other future projects like is there anything else coming out singles or anything like that um so there is um a young lady here her name is actually jada morgan um she recently got signed to quality entertainment which is based out of charlotte um which is also in conjunction with the baby um and i'm on her project actually we have a track together um called rivers flow so i'm excited about that one um and then there's a couple other artists that have projects in the pipelines um so yeah, I'm excited about that, like outside of my own individual project. Um, and then I hope that she's on my project as well. Um, she's on a track called Sneaky Link, which is super dope. Ooh, okay. um, yeah, so she'll be performing that live at the release actually. Um, Blanche will be there and a couple other artists. So yeah, I'm excited about it, man, for real. <laughs> that's what's up. Yeah, no, that's real good. And, and when's that coming out? Or, or when's that happening? Um, which one? the uh the the event the show that's gonna be august 13th august, august okay yeah. okay so that's gonna be a nice little weekend of music that's what's up yeah. and when you said in conjunction of the baby do you mean the artist the baby yeah 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 and that's what's up okay he's yeah. annoying but that's what's up yeah. <laughs> that's a big he's name and he's, done a lot, <laughs> and he's done a lot for music so like you know what i mean like yeah so that's what's yeah. up okay and he is a he's a he's he's not a carolina dude is he yeah he's charlotte he's oh right. yeah he's charlotte yeah yeah so yeah hometown so okay that's gonna be <laughs> some good like charlotte energy so yeah. you know is there anything else you wanted to like promote or highlight um you know anything um, you wanted to say to the people definitely just look for you know look for me on all streaming platforms like she said there's three projects out right now shout out to all those artists um black girl actually does have a visual as well that was put together by Michael Starr, who um, I grew up with, but he's actually a dope and pro uh, producer as well. The little brother of Rudy Kearns, if you've ever heard of Rudy Kearns. Um, so if you haven't heard of Rudy, definitely check him out too. He's from my hometown, Grammy winning artist. Um, I haven't, but I'm gonna definitely check him out. Rudy Kearns? You do, do, yes, Rudy yeah. Kearns. Um, definitely yeah. check him out. Um, so yeah, just look for me on streaming platforms. Um, definitely thank you for this interview. This is actually my first interview as well. Uh, 
Uh, yeah. Y'all heard it here first. This is our <laughs> first interview with Becca Rose at Feel the Music. What? Stop playing. Stop playing. <laughs> but that's what's up. And so, but the, the handle that they can find you at would be like at A underscore Av. A. Yeah. So somebody already had took the A B E. So it's A Y B E um, on social media. Yeah. Mostly Instagram. Um, you'll be able to hear some tracks out there. So yeah. Check me out. Thank you. Okay, yes, y'all. And of course, it was a pleasure. I'm so honored to be your first interview ever. That's really, really, like, inspiring to me, actually. Like, this is great. <laughs> and, like, so people, please follow the, like, dope Honest Abe at A-O underscore A-Y-V-E, Honest Abe. So please, you know, follow, follow, follow. Um, and, you know, we got a little bit of time left, so I want to do a little, like, you know, I wanted to tap into Honest Abe, you know, Facebook, you know, Facebook time, Facebook era, okay. <laughs> and asked a few questions that came to my mind as I was, um, as we were talking. So like, just give me your hot take on a few, these three, I'll give you like three topics and just give me a hot take. Okay. So the first one, Kevin Samuels death. Rest in peace, Kevin Samuels. Okay. Um, <laughs> my second one is, um, the Monique like like going in on DL Hughley and telling him to read his contract. I love Monique. Um, I do love Monique. Shout out to Auntie Mo. <laughs> <laughs> I do think um, that we are actually witnessing history with Monique. Um, I think that she's going to be one of those people that were hated in her time, but people are going to look back and say she was monumental for the movement that she's trying to do. Um, as far as her and DL, <laughs> relationship is uh, done. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. And, <laughs> and hmm, the Kim Kardashian interview where she said, get off your effing ass and go to work. Take your own advice. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Okay. So that was, that was it, folks. Like, thank you so much, Honest A, for this interview. And I'm, once again, very honored to be your first interview. And, um, you know, follow at Phil the Music, follow at A-Y-O underscore A-Y-V-E, at A-Y-O underscore Ave. So you can check out all of her music. It's available on Apple Music. Is it on the other things like SoundCloud and, and um, Spotify? Uh -huh. SoundCloud, Spotify for sure, YouTube, um, Tidal, it's all out there. Okay, and yeah, and look out for her, you know, uh, end of summer, fall projects and shows coming up. So please follow, follow, follow. I'm telling you, her music is dope. Black Girl is an anthem and it is timeless. It is, it is truly timeless. So thank you all so much for listening. This has been your girl, Becca Rose and goodbye world. <laughs>